In this episode, I'll show you some basics for triggering an off-camera flash and building a light stick. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we have a question from Paul in Nantucket, and Paul said, what is a light stick and how do you use it? Well, Paul, a light stick is simply a monopod with a flash, usually a speed light that's mounted to the end of that. And so I'll show you how to build one and use it. But really the thing that we're going to talk about in this episode and even the next, that's right, we're going to do a two part episode here. That is controlling a remote speed light. In other words, how to trigger a flash that's not connected to your camera and how to control that flash so you get a proper exposure. And so in this episode, what we really want to talk about is building the, the light stick and show you what that is and how to do some of the basic triggering using a built in uh, commander module on a lot of cameras and how to use something uh, called the pocket wizard mini and flex and how to do a manual metering so we've got a lot of different options in this episode but the, a lot of people have written in and asked what do I do if I don't have a light meter and I don't have those fancy radio triggers well there's another option that we're going to show you next week and that is showing you how to use a little secret light meter that's built into a lot of speed lights so there's a lot to cover and that's why we've chopped it up into two episodes so this week let's first by uh, start by going into the studio and I'll show you the basics of building a light stick and triggering a remote flash so let's go over there and do that now well, we have a bunch of stuff here on this table, a lot of different equipment here, and you're probably wondering why we have so much. Well, the reason for that is there are a lot of different options for building a light stick and specifically how to control the light in a remote location. And so I want to show you that you can do this in a bunch of different ways for all different types of budgets and it's agnostic as far as the brand that we're using. So we're going to show you stuff with Canon and Nikon, but it would work equally well with uh, different camera brands. We're even going to switch up brands where we're controlling a Canon with a uh, Nikon and a, a Nikon with a Canon. So you can see how uh, all this stuff will work on any budget and any brand of camera. So what we really need to do here is talk about what we're trying to do. And so what we're trying to do is take something like this where we have a flash on our camera and what we want to do is we want to improve the quality of light by taking the flash off the camera and moving it so we have different direction of light and put it closer to our subject or farther away and maybe even use something like this which is a nice soft box and so we can move this around and we want to do all of this stuff really really quickly because this is really built for shooting things like weddings wedding receptions on location engagement portraits and senior portraits and things like that so it has to be pretty darn quick so that's what we're trying to do so what we have to do is figure out how to take our flash and mount it to something. So we have to have something that holds it. Then we have to have some way of telling our flash to fire from our camera. So we have to have some way to trigger it. That's the second thing. The third thing we really need to do is be able to control our flash remotely. So we have to figure out how to meter the flash and control that. So hold it, trigger it, control it. Those are the three things that we really want to do. So let's talk first about uh, building a light stick. And what I have here are a couple of monopods. Now these work great if you have an assistant. And the reason for that is the monopod. You can put these legs down and then you can run right up to where you need to be, put that down, point it at your subject, and then take some pictures and then pick that up and run. So instead of having a light stand, you can uh, use this and it's really, really lightweight and quick. Or if you're working by yourself, you can use a normal light stand. I recommend a high lightweight light stand, like this is an airy light stand right here. And there are a bunch of different brands that you can use. And so this one, if you don't have an assistant, you need a light stand that you can actually put down so that it won't fall over when you run off. So um, on a monopod, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get one of these little adapters. This is a uh, just a stud adapter here. And there's a quarter inch thread on the top of a monopod that's built for putting a, uh, a tripod head on there. And we're not putting a tripod head on there because we don't want to put a camera on this. We want to put a light. And so we need to convert this from a tripod stand or a monopod to a light stand. And we do that by just getting one of these little very inexpensive uh, brass studs. So once you have that on there, what you can do is now you can start mounting things like this little adapter here onto your light stand or your light stick, your monopod, or you can use something like this. And this is what I really recommend. This is an umbrella adapter and it's called an umbrella adapter because it's got a little place right on the top where you can put a flash. So you can put that on the flash and lock it down. So that goes on there like that. And then what you can also do is right beneath that, there's this little hole and you can put an umbrella on that. So you can actually have an umbrella on a stand and then you can control that. So that's how you build a light stand. It's really, really simple to do that. You just need a monopod, 
some kind of an adapter like an umbrella adapter and then you put your flash on there. Well the second thing we need to do though is figure out how to trigger our flash from our camera. So let's talk about the simplest way and the most inexpensive way to do that and that is to use the built-in trigger uh, and the remote function on your flash. So um, Canon and Nikon and Sony they all have this where you can take a flash like this one this is a SB910 Nikon and on the back it says master and remote so if I put this on remote when I turn it on what it does is it says hey listen for signals coming from a, a master controller and that master controller could be another flash that's on a camera or uh, a lot of cameras uh, have that built in so for example this D90 has the controller built in you just need to turn on your flash and there's a little menu setting and so this can control this remote flash uh, just with the built-in pop-up flash the same thing is true for example this is a rebel t3i canon it can do that same thing with canon flashes so a lot of newer cameras have the ability to control remote flashes without having to buy anything extra and the way that works is there's a little receiver right here and this looks and it sees signals coming from the flash and then the camera is telling the flash to fire it's also telling the flash how much light to output so it's controlling everything so it's doing the triggering and the control all built in and that's the easiest way to get started just get an external flash if your camera has a built-in commander it'll work just fine now if you don't have a built-in commander you can get a second flash to put on your camera and it can be the master flash and you can control it that way. Now one of the problems though with that is it's line of sight. So this has to always be able to see the light coming from the camera. And so what you'll do is you'll be twisting this a lot just to keep that receiver faced toward your camera. But sometimes you'll be doing things like twisting your camera to do maybe a portrait like this. And when that happens, well, all of a sudden these can't see each other and so you run into problems and you'll need a better solution than just the line of sight um, trigger that is built into a lot of cameras. And so what I recommend then is to uh, move to a radio trigger. And what a radio trigger does is instead of using light, it uses radio signals. And so one of the very popular solutions is the Pocket Wizard Plus 2s. So we've got a couple of Plus 2s here. And so you need one transmitter on your uh, camera and then you need a receiver on each of your flashes and so what happens is when this thing is turned on when uh, this hears a signal when it receives a signal it makes the flash fire and so it's pretty cool and you just need a little PC cable to plug that in and you can get these um, for almost any brand it's just a standard cable um, that plugs right into your flash now the problem with that is you're gonna have great triggering because it's gonna work at really long distances a lot of different uh, you know, up to hundreds of feet away, but there's nothing telling the flash how much light to uh, output. So there's no control. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to set your flash in manual mode and use a light meter. Or if you're an advanced user, you can use guide numbers to figure out the distance from your subject. And that works just fine. But a better solution if you want to use off-camera flash and do all of the controls and have your flash work basically the same as it would if it was on the camera itself is to use these guys and these are the Nike are the uh, Pocket Wizard Mini and Flex so the Mini TT1 Flex TT5 and what these allow you to do is radio use radio triggers so you would put a uh, a transmitter on your camera and then you'd put a speed light on one of these receivers and it'll slip right on there if you just put it in the groove and then they use radio signals and this not only tells the flash to fire but it also controls the flash from the camera. So you can do all kinds of things with these guys. You can increase or decrease the power of the flash. If you have multiple flashes, you can put them in zones. You can turn zones on or off. You can set different channels. You can use high speed sync and all kinds of really awesome stuff. And so if you're doing a lot of off camera speed lights um, for weddings and receptions and things like that, then the Mini and Flex are a very, very popular solution. And the nice thing is they're totally automated. So you just sort of turn them on and start shooting and it's really easy to use those. So a lot of different solutions for triggering your flash off your camera and a lot of different solutions for controlling that flash off of your camera. There's one really nice advanced technique that we're going to talk about next week where we'll discover that both Canon and Nikon flashes have a built-in little light meter 
and they can control their own output of light without having to be controlled from a camera. It's an advanced function. We're going to talk all about it next week because a lot of people don't even know that exists. So we're going to talk about all of that stuff in the next episode. But for this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to head down to the park. We're going to put some of this stuff to use. We're going to show you how to take some pictures and we're going to shoot this great model called Claudia. And you'll see how we can do all of this stuff in a really easy to use setup. All right, well, we're here in the park and Claudia is our model. She's going to be helping us out today. Now, the first setup we have is our uh, Canon Speedlight and our we have a Canon Rebel T3i. And this is going to be triggered built using the built in uh, wireless transmitter mode. And it works pretty well. So Claudia, look right at me. We're just going to take a couple shots here. Beautiful. I love it. Good. And you can see these shots are being illuminated by our uh, softbox here. But one of the problems that we're going to have is if I want to do a vertical shot, as soon as I do that, the flash is going this way and this receiver can't see it. And so you can see right here that when I do a vertical shot, beautiful. Well, there's no flash. The reason there's no flash again, this can't see my flash trigger. So the built-in triggering mode works great for most of the situations that you'll be in. It works great inside, but outside in bright sunlight or in situations like this, you might need a radio trigger. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the mini inflex that I showed you earlier, and we're going to shoot, and we're going to just sort of save time here. So we have a Nikon already set up, so we're going to swap that out really fast, and we're going to keep shooting before the sun goes down. All right, well now we've swapped out really quickly. We have a mini um, Pocket Wizard Mini TT1 and a Flex TT5 here on our SB900. And because this is a radio trigger, we don't have to worry about losing communication by tilting our camera or sunlight uh, interfering, anything like that. So we're ready to shoot. The cool thing is with the Mini and Flex or the trigger that we showed you earlier with the remote control that's built into your camera, you can use all of the functionality of your flash that you're used to, like flash exposure compensation and balancing for the background, all that kind of stuff. It just works. So we're going to shoot a few pictures of Claudia here. And then after we get done with that, we're going to show you how to do one more setup, which is a fully manual setup. But let's get some shots first. All right, look right at me. Beautiful. All right, now what we have set up here is a fully manual system. This is a Canon 580EX2. We've got a Pocket Wizard Plus 2 on here and a Pocket Wizard Plus 2 here. So when this fires, this tells this uh, flash to trigger. And this is on full power because we need a lot of light, but we need to figure out how to set our camera according to how bright the flash is. And so Kelsey's back here and she actually has a light meter and she's gonna meter the light for us. So go ahead and meter the light, please. And that meter is at F9. And the reason we have this on a stand instead of a stick is because we only have one assistant, that's Kelsey, so she can't hold the stand and meter. And so this is a little bit different, but it also allows us to shoot fully manual. So we're gonna shoot a few pictures here of Claudia, and I think we're gonna get some great results. Well, there you have it, a bunch of different ways that you can uh, use a light stick on location. Now, don't forget, this is a two-part series. So next week, we're going to show you how you can use a little-known feature of uh, speed lights, and that is that some speed lights have a built-in light meter, and so you can let them uh, figure out their own light output, which is really cool. So I'll show you how to enable that and use that both for Canon and Nikon speed lights, so don't miss that. Also, don't forget to go to the Adorama Learning Center because there are all kinds of articles and information. Uh, the sad thing is there are so many different ways that you can build a light stick and trigger off-camera flashes. There's no way we could put that into one episode or even two episodes, but the Adorama Learning Center has a lot of different articles and videos that talk a lot about that. And if you are a photographer that uses a light stick or an off-camera flash a lot and you know some tips and tricks, please leave your comments and tell us how you do what I just talked about because I only have my experience and I know a lot of wedding and location photographers have really dialed this in and we'd love to hear from you. Well, thanks so much for joining me this week. Don't forget, you can always send your questions to me about photography to askmark at adorama.com. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. 
And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Is she sassing me? Do you hear this? I not because you don't allow me to wear a microphone. You say, say your complaint again. You made me walk around in the wet, wet bog. Matt, get video of the wet bog. There's no wet bog. Wet bog. Local weather. Look at. What? It's not 70. It's probably like 62. 63. Freezing. 63. Digital photography one-on-one -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.